Hey guys, it's Nikki Moon. Welcome back. If you've been here before, welcome if you're new. Um, so if you're watching this video, I guess you are here because you either purchased a paint kit and you're following along with the design that you chose, or maybe you just found this video and you thought it looked kind of cool, you wanted to see what was going on, so you just clicked on it. But either way, however you got here, thank you so, 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 so much for being here. Um, let's just go ahead and kind of get into the tutorial. Now, um, if you did come here because you bought one of my paint kits, make sure you watch the video that goes through what comes in the kit, and also make sure you watch the video on the recommended setup for the materials that come in the kit. If you're here following along with your own materials, that's totally cool too. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know how it worked out for you. Um, just keep in mind a couple of things if you are following along with your own materials. I am using acrylic paint, so I cannot recommend or I cannot guarantee that you'll get the same result with other types of paint. Um, but feel free to kind of do your own thing. Even if you did get my kit, feel free to at any time just kind of go your own way, switch up some colors, mix your own color, um, and use different materials, add your own materials, whatever you have laying around, pull it out, keep it near you, and let's just get into it. <laughs> let's just go. All right. So what we're going to do first is mix our colors. So I'm just going to use my biggest brush so I have my palette and if you did buy the kit just make sure once you're done with the color you kind of close it back up to make sure you it lasts as long as it possibly can and if you're a little worried about oh how long is this paint gonna last this particular strip has been inside of this paint strip for like over two weeks now and it's still ooh, <laughs> as you can see still very active and fresh okay so we have all of them open for this particular painting this is starry puff we are going to mix the background color first now if you look carefully you'll notice that there's two different pinks in the pink container so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my brush kind of like a little spoon and I'm just gonna scoop out scoop out all that pink and the only reason I'm scooping it out this might seem like a lot but it's easier to scoop it out mix it and then put it back in instead of trying to mix it in here because it all spills out so I'm just gonna take all of it out I'm gonna mix these two together this is the exact shade that we're gonna need for the background as you can see so I'm gonna now just kind of scoop it back into the container this way I'm only gonna scoop about half of it back into the container though this way I can keep some for later and I'm also gonna scrape my brush on the side of the container to get all of the color out and then I'm just gonna go ahead and close up the pink for later I'm gonna dip my brush in the water and before I clean my brush out I always just like to kind of put a couple drops of water on my paint on the palette just to keep it from drying out too fast without stirring I'm not gonna stir because remember we just kind of scraped all that paint out you don't want to add more paint to the brush I'm just putting a little bit of water in there and then I'm gonna clean my brush if you have a paper towel or your rag you can kind of dry your brush off if not you can simply scrape it on your jar so the next color we need is gonna be purple. So we're gonna take, I'm gonna show you really up close how much I'm grabbing here. I'm gonna grab like that small of a scoop of white, just a little roll of white paint. And I'm just gonna kind of scrape that onto my palette. And I scrape it so that all the paint comes out without filling up my brush. Then I'm gonna wipe off any of that excess white I'm gonna grab a really big scoop of the purple paint and I'm gonna put that right on top of the white pretty much scrape 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 
and then to that I'm gonna add just a little dab probably about the same amount of the white of blue and I'm gonna stir these three together just like the pink I'm gonna try to keep this section of paint in as small of an area as I can I'm just gonna try to rake it all in the same spot scrape all of the extra off clean off your brush these are the only two colors that we're going to start with we're going to mix the skin tone a little bit later because we don't want these to get too dry so the next part is a part that i'm going to do with my smaller round brush but you guys can do it with a pencil if you have one laying around um, and you want to make sure you get your lines right you can do it with a pencil no shame in that I'm gonna be doing it with my paintbrush though and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make a little puddle of water on my palette and I'm gonna grab just a tiny bit of my pink paint and I'm gonna water down that little puddle and what this does is it gives me a really transparent kind of like sketchable paint so if you don't have a pencil you can do this if you're feeling bold you can do this um, if you just want to try out freehanding feel free to just kind of jump in and try this out but like I said a pencil is just as good if not better honestly because it has an eraser <laughs> so the first thing that we are going to need is a circle and so this circle is going to make up the puff of the starry puff and you want to place it it's not directly in the center of the canvas I'm gonna place it a little bit higher up about this much off of the canvas you can even put yourself give yourself a little dot the dot is centered but it's a little bit down from the top I'm just going to sort of create a circle with this watered-down paint it's not super big so you'll see once I'm done with it it's also not perfect but I just created a little circle right there I have a good amount of space on both sides I can fit my thumb on both sides so I might even want to make this side a little bit bigger and this again we're just sketching all of these lines are gonna get covered up so don't worry about it if you mess up a little bit so I think I like the size of my circle here. So now what I'm gonna do is draw an arch that comes up from underneath or up from the bottom of my canvas and it crosses over this circle. This arch that we're drawing is going to be the top of the head. So the shape of the forehead, this is the arch we're drawing. I'm gonna start more narrow than I think. You don't wanna start way out here. Even though you could, you would just have a bigger forehead. I'm gonna start, I would say about a finger's width from the edge and I also want to end a finger's width from the edge of the canvas so you can even give yourself a little marker if you want like that and then I'm just gonna arch up and come back down just like that now no big deal I kind of feel like I went a little too far over here if you feel like you need to adjust this line no big deal keep in mind that the background is going to cover all of these lines even if you decide to not paint your background pink if you're using a pencil or if you watered down the paint whatever color you've mixed is going to be thick enough to cover these pink lines even if it may take a layer or two you'll be able to do it all right next we're going to draw the hairline the hairline is going to start with a slightly curved line that sits just under the circle but it stops in the middle of the forehead. So there's space on both sides, just like that. And then all I did, it's a very simple hairline. I just kind of curve it down. And again, adjust as you go. It's okay if it looks a little bit rough right now. We're gonna clean all that up with the paint. All right, last thing we're gonna do in the sketching phase, actually two more things. We're gonna draw the little hair tie, the golden scrunchie or golden band that's tying the puff together. And all that is, we're gonna 
focus on the middle of the top of the head. So that's this line right here is what we're focused on, but we're gonna draw on top of that. We're gonna draw two lines sticking out from that. And you want the overall piece that these two lines create, you want this overall rectangle shape to sit in the middle of the top of the head. And then to close that off, we're gonna start forming this curly texture. And all that is is a bunch, it's almost like a letter U, like three times, at least three times. You can do it more, but just one. Oops, that one was a little dry. One, and you can try to make them different sizes to add a little bit of variety. So maybe the last one's a little bit bigger than the others. And then last thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add a wavy line around my entire circle to kind of remind myself that I want <laughs> my dog. I'm sorry about that. A wavy line around all of this. So it's just to remind myself that I want to paint in a curly texture later on. And you can change that shape of the line based on what kind of hair you want to add. Now, the baby hairs and the eyebrows, we will add on top later. So we're not, we're not gonna worry about that right now. Any brush that you've used, either completely clean it off and then put it down, or if there's paint on it, just make sure you leave it in your water. Cause you definitely, if you want to, if you plan on using these brushes a bunch of times, which I hope you guys do, um, make sure you clean them off before you sit them down. Because the acrylic paint, once it dries on there, it's almost impossible to get it out. So we're gonna go back to the first brush that we used when we were mixing and we're gonna start painting our background. So I'm gonna just give my background color a quick mix because remember we put those drops of water on it. I'm gonna give it a quick mix to make sure everything's the same consistency. One of the questions I get a lot is, what type of paint do I use and why is the consistency the way it is? Um, I do have a video coming, if it's not posted already, on the actual brands of paint I use. But I kind of think it's not really about the brand of paint. It's about the fact that I put a couple drops of water into it and I work the paint. So all of that stirring that I just did, it really matters as far as how the paint kind of goes on your canvas. And another thing that matters is making sure there's not too much paint in the canvas, which is why you'll always see me scrape the extra paint out like that. And then I reload just enough paint on both sides of my brush to make sure I get a nice smooth application. Here's a good look at what both sides of my brush pretty much looks like at all times. A good amount of paint on both sides. And then we're just gonna start painting in our background. So I am going to first sort of just use, now this is a square sort of shaped brush, so I'm gonna use it to sort of ride the edge of my outline. I'm lining up the flat edge of my brush with the line. When you get to a corner, it's not like a pencil. You can't just keep going without stopping because of the shape of the brush. So right here, you're gonna kinda have to readjust and make sure the flat edge is against the line you're trying to go around. So again, the flat edge of the brush line that up with the outline that you just created and that's why it's really important that you're happy with your outline before you start painting it can be rough but if you notice it's just way off center or something like that or something is way too small that's something you definitely want to change before this part so we're just right in the edge and this is why I put paint on both sides of my brush because I can always just flip to the other side when I think I'm about to run out I'm gonna switch angles because now I'm switching directions. And there we go. Now before this dries, acrylic paint does dry kind of fast. I'm going to just smooth out the edges. I didn't grab any more paint yet. If you need to grab more paint, please do. But if you see heavy thick lines on the canvas, try your best to spread those out smoothly before grabbing more paint because this is just the first layer that we're doing. So once we add another layer, this pink is gonna get as solid and as bright as the example. So I'll even show you a comparison, uh, a comparison in a second. You can go ahead and paint the sides of your canvas too. 
We're gonna let this background dry a little bit because like I said, we need to add another layer to it once it dries so it's as bright as this one. But for right now, we are going to clean our brush off and we're gonna go into our purple color and we're gonna work on the hair. So actually, nope, I lied. We are going to mix another color. So I'm gonna grab about this much white paint. So if you bought this kit, um, make sure you really pay attention to the amount of paint I'm grabbing because that's really gonna help you when it comes to making sure this lasts you for both of the canvases that came with the kit plus any other canvases that you might wanna buy in the future. So really pay attention to the amount that I'm grabbing if you bought the kit. If you're using your own supplies, still you might wanna pay attention to the amount I'm grabbing if you wanna make sure your acrylic paints last as long as they can because a lot of times people will grab way more than they need um, and you don't really need to you can make your paints last a little longer but anyway the next color we're gonna make mix is a light yellow so I'm gonna grab I grab that much white I'm gonna grab about the same amount of yellow I'm gonna mix those two together really quick as long as you get equal parts of each one you're gonna get the right shade of yellow but um, I'm gonna do this with my bigger brush. I'm just gonna paint in the scrunchy area, but feel free to switch to your smaller round brush for this detail. I'm gonna go into the purple color that we made, about that much on both sides of my brush. And just like we did with the background, I'm just gonna start outlining the inside this time of the puff. So if you need to rotate your canvas, do that. If you need to rotate your brush, do that. Whatever you need to do to keep the flat edge of the brush along the line that you're tracing, that's what you need to do. And I rotate my canvas because it's more comfortable for me to keep my hand sort of like to the right of my canvas at all times instead of like <clears throat> like trying to move around all the time and now here's a good example of when you can switch to the small brush you can switch to the small brush whenever you want and when you do use this one, I actually like to spin it to get a nice even coating instead of just getting a big blob like that. It's better to just spin or twist and coat the outside of it. And once all that is done, if there's paint on your brush, please, please put it in your water. Like just take the two seconds to clean it off really quick so that you don't ruin the brush. It's so easy to forget about it and then two minutes later the paint's dried and you don't have a brush anymore. So I'm trying to be really good about that because I'm not the best at doing that or remembering to do that. And so at this point we're just gonna paint in. I'm doing short little brush strokes like this to get a nice thick coating and this is not the first layer of paint we're gonna be putting on the hair so I'm also just kind of going as close to the outline as I can when I do this. And then right before the paint dries, I go over everything in pretty much the same direction or as close to the same direction as I can get. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. Another thing you can do with this brush is instead of using the flat, the whole flat side of the brush, you can actually just use the front edge of the brush. So instead of this way, I'm holding my brush this way. And that way, you can get a nice clean edge. Again, you can use the round brush if you want to. And then before everything dries, one quick pass to make it all smooth. We're going to mix our brown what I'm doing is just grabbing a small scoop of brown like this, putting it on my palette. I'm grabbing 
grab an even smaller scoop of white. Put that on my palette. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and double the brown because we just want a slightly lighter brown than the original brown. And we're also gonna add more highlights and shadows. Now feel free to customize this. If you wanna make it look more like your own skin tone, you can add a little bit of, and I'll even show you really quick, a little demo. You can add, it sounds weird, but you can add a little bit of purple if you would like to go a more chocolate level. So the more purple you add, you could even do this with blue, or the more blue you add, you can get more chocolatey. If you want to showcase like an undertone, you can grab a little of the lighter brown and add a little yellow to it to get different undertones. You can add a little of your pink to kind of alter the undertone. So play around with the skin tone mixtures if you want. Let me know if you want a whole video on skin tones and I can do that for you guys. But um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this basic one of a little bit of white and a little bit of brown. And I'm going to paint the entire forehead with this color. But before this brown dries, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a tiny bit of white. I'm gonna lighten up the brown that I just used. So whatever base skin tone you kind of settled on, add a little bit of white regardless of what you just made. This isn't really to lighten your skin tone. Overall, it's to add a little bit of lighting, like a little bit of shadow and lighting to the painting. So just lighten up that base color a little bit. And there's two ways to do this. If you just want a quick little outline, you can use the front edge of your brush just like we did with the other one. So not the flat side, but this way. And you can just kind of run your brush over the top of the forehead a little bit. And see how that gives you like the illusion of like a little bit of lighting. The more you run over it, the smoother it gets. And you can leave it at that, or you can do it a couple times. You can even add more white and get lighter and lighter with it as you move closer to the edge. After we do that, we're gonna clean the brown off on our brush, and we're pretty much just gonna do that same thing we just did to the forehead but in a more dramatic way to the hair. So I'm gonna go back into my purple and this is the middle brush. So this is the one with the more rounded shape. Remember, we have the flat one and then we have the one with more of a rounded shape. So I'm using my rounded shape. And by the way, it's called a filbert in case anybody wondered or in case anybody's wondering. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the top of the hair because at that point, this is probably dry, so I'm safe to add a second layer now that the first layer is dry. And I'm gonna add that second layer just to cover any empty spots. But then, same thing. I'm gonna dip into a little bit of white. Just make a little bit of light purple. I'm not making all of my purple lighter. That's very important. I'm just making some of the purple lighter in case I need to go back to my other purple. And I'm just gonna run my brush across the top while that second layer of the darker purple is still wet. And I don't know if you guys can see that, but it adds a little bit of a highlight. Feel free to do this step with your smaller brush and I can even show you guys that too. Like that. And we're gonna go back to our background color, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and add that second layer to my background. Okay, so now that our second layer of the background is done, we're gonna go back to our hair. So we're gonna go back to our purple and we're gonna go back to our rounded brush, our middle-sized brush, and we are going to um, go back to our, our purple. 
and if you are running out of purple at this point i have a little bit left so you may have run out if you did just rewind the video and you can mix yourself some more with the rest of your paint i'm gonna go ahead and add just like we did to our background i'm adding another layer to my hair but i'm kind of focused more this time on the inside i'm not really trying to get as close to the edge as possible and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna switch to my smaller brush mix a little bit of white into some of my purple and i'm just gonna start putting a bunch of swirls mainly on the right side of the puff so i'm gonna start by sort of riding the edge of some of these and then every now and then i'll just kind of come in like that so again you might want to follow a curve and then just kind of swerve in like that maybe you just put a random letter s in there maybe you follow a curve the other direction you want to let yourself kind of cross over but at the same time so you, yeah you want to let yourself kind of cross over other curls but at the same time, you want to focus on the right side of the puff and you don't want to overdo it. So I'm probably going to add at this point maybe one or two more and then I'm going to stop. You don't want to get to the point where you cannot see the dark purple underneath. After you get to this point, the only other thing I'm going to add as far as the light purple goes is adding a little bit more white into it to get an even brighter purple and almost white purple and I'll pick some of my favorite curls out of what I see here and I will just highlight three or four of those feel free to go outside of the lines at this point with the lighter purple and add new curls that kind of sort of come outside of the puff and then you're gonna clean off your brush really quick and we're gonna do the same thing on this side, but with a darker purple. So to make a darker purple, I'm just gonna grab one scoop of purple. And don't be like me and just dip a dirty brush in there, but, and oops, that was way too much. And about a half a scoop of brown. And then I'm gonna also add a big scoop of blue in there. Now this color looks kind of muddy right now, but you want to get like a really dark, you're going to get kind of like a dark gray. And we're going to use that color to number one, define these curls right here next to the scrunchie. And then everything behind the forehead, because right now we can't really tell the difference between the puff and the forehead. So I'm going to... I'm just gonna outline maybe like right here too and then from there I might kind of fill in the bottom section with a lot of this just to kind of fill in that shadow but from there I'm just gonna start doing more S's I want to keep this line right here intact but other than that I'm just doing more of these curls wherever I want once you get to the part where the dark swirls are meeting the light swirls you can overlap a few, maybe one or two, but then you want to keep it to a minimum with these two kind of mingling just because you want to make sure you can clearly see this is the dark side of the puff. This is where the light is coming from on the right. Those little flyaway hairs with our highlights, we want to do the same thing with the shadows. So I'm just going to go ahead and Put a couple more of those S-shaped lines coming out of the puff. And then I'm going to clean that brush off and I'm going to get a little bit of white paint, just plain old white. And what I'm going to do is add a couple more highlights in pure white, which we haven't really done yet. We mixed a lot of light colors for highlights, but we didn't do anything in pure white. So the first place I'm going to put a pure white highlight is the right side of the head just to kind of separate that out a little bit the second place I'm gonna do two lines 
in this hairband because it's supposed to be sort of like a golden one. I'm also going to do just a few, way shorter this time though. I'm not even really doing full S's. I'm just doing bits and pieces of curls I can already see. Going over a couple of those in the white. And then I'm gonna add some stars. So with the stars, you're gonna pick a spot. I'm gonna add three stars. One, two, three. I'll start with this one. You're gonna pick a spot. You can give yourself a little dot if you want. And you're gonna press your brush down just the tip of it. And then you're gonna flick it up. And you're gonna do that in four directions. So up, down, right, left. Just like that. The last thing we're gonna do is add some stars or some tinier stars. So you can do that with the front of your paintbrush if you want. Just make sure it's really loaded up with paint. But another thing you can do is actually just dip the back of your brush in a little bit of paint and just kind of stamp your stars on there like that. And just scatter them around. One last little touch I'm gonna add to the stars with the hair is anything left over on my brush, I'm just gonna dip my brush into the water, make a little watered down version of that. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of a swirl around some of my stars. So maybe some of the stars that I don't like as much, like this little one over here, I can just add, and I might need a little more water because that was kind of too opaque for me. But yeah, just a little, a little spiral, a little glowy spiral around some of your stars. All right, and the last thing, actually, I guess it counts as two things. We're gonna clean our brush off. We're gonna add these baby hairs. Now for this part, I'm going back to the original purple I used for the hair, but if you don't have any of that left, you can just grab the plain purple. It's such a thin line that you won't notice it's not the exact same color. So if you don't feel like mixing more of that color, that's totally fine. But it's very important that you just put at least a drop of water left or at least a drop of water into the purple that you have left or into a very small amount of purple if you have none left. Scrape your brush out so that it's nice and slick. And then grab a little bit of it on the front and twist that little bit all around your brush so that it comes to a nice point like this. And then what we're gonna do is just start adding our baby hairs. So I'm gonna start sort of off center. So find the middle of the head, then move over a little. And I'm just gonna start with a very simple curve that curves in, down, and then up. And I'm just gonna start each, I'll show you the example. I'm just gonna start each tuft of little baby hairs with one line per section just so I can map them out. So I'll put another one over here. And the key with baby hairs is that just like we flicked our wrist up at the end of the stars, you want to flick your wrist at the end of each hair. And you also want to make sure that they're facing a certain way. So I only have one that's kind of curving down. And the rest, they're all different sizes, but they do all kind of curve up the same way because generally you'll style the ones on one side toward that side and the ones on this side toward this side. So trying to kind of emulate that. Once you have one line per section, you're just gonna continue. Can you guys see that? You're gonna continue to add hairs to each section, but you always end at the same point almost like a letter Y, if that makes sense. So can you see how that kind of looks like a really wiggly cursive Y? They end on the same starting line, but the front is the part that gets wider. So I hope that makes sense. For the smaller ones, you might only need to do it once. 
but for the bigger ones you might want to put an extra curl in the front and maybe one or two underneath so I hope that makes sense do that all around and then whatever you have left we're gonna put two tiny arches literally just like upside down check marks or upside down letter V's I'm pressing hard in the beginning and then right as I arch up and down, I press a little bit lighter so that I get a thinner line. So I'll show you again, loading up my brush with the same purple that I used for the baby hairs. I'm gonna start in the middle of the face, leaving a space in between the first one. I'm gonna arch up and press a little harder on my way up than on my way down so that the second half of the arch is just a little bit shorter. All right, so those are the eyebrows. I might add, I think I wanna thicken up these baby hairs a little bit though. You can add extra ones if you want. At this point, all we really need to do, if you notice in this example, there's some pink reflected in the hair. So I'm gonna do that with that round brush, that rounded brush, our middle size brush. So I'm gonna clean that off. I'm gonna dry it off. I'm gonna go into our pink. Okay, so we're almost there, you guys. So we're just gonna put a little bit, I'm putting it in the same spot as my other pink. And I'm gonna get a little bit of water just to thin it out, probably like two or three drops, cause I do want this to be fairly thin. So it's not dripping. Oh. It is dripping. So if it's dripping, keep mixing. All right, so it's not dripping as it's not dripping quickly anymore. So this is kind of the consistency I'm looking for. And all I'm going to do is hold this brush kind of flat, almost as if it's against my canvas, and I'm going to find curves within what we've already put on the canvas. So, for example, I see a curve right here. I see a nice rounded curve line right here. I'm kind of thinking almost like a letter C. Anything that resembles a letter C toward the darker side of the hair, I'm kind of pointing out. To start off, you just wanna kind of pick out a couple of those little C curves. And once you've picked out some of those C curves, you can start twisting your brush in other directions. You don't wanna overdo it, so if you want to Kind of spread some of that out with your smaller brush you can you want to do the same thing that we did on this side with the white of the forehead with a little bit of pink on this side and feel free to add a couple of lines that are a bit more bold than the ones that are underneath just a couple like we did with the white you can do with a little bit of pure pink if you choose to. And voila! Oh, last thing, last thing. If you want to, this is very much only if you want to. If you have any of your yellow left or if you want to make some more, just get a tiny little bit of it. Tiny little bit of your brown. It's going to make like a golden mustard color. And you can use that color to just add a shadow like a darker reflection on this golden band in her hair. And there you have it guys, Starry Puff. Um, if you followed along this entire tutorial, thank you so much. Um, definitely show me what you've made. If you feel like it, you can tag me on Instagram, you can tag me on TikTok, you can tag me on Twitter if you want. Um, if you painted this, it doesn't even matter if you painted this with the kit that I provide on my shop or in my shop or if you used your own materials. I would love to see whatever you made um, after or during watching this tutorial. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys liked it. Please leave me feedback below. I would love to know what you guys would like to see, what you thought, things I could do better, stuff like that. So just let me know down below. Um, but other than that, please just check out my other tutorials. I have a whole bunch of other stuff coming for you guys so 
yeah just keep a lookout for that thank you so much for following this tutorial thank you so much for purchasing a kit if you did for watching for liking for just being here i appreciate you guys so much if i stay any longer i'm just gonna keep saying that so um again oh before i go i do want to just show you the two so i don't know i kind of like different things about so i could probably add another layer of pink now that i'm looking at these but as you can see we have plenty of pink left so that wouldn't be a problem if you do choose to do that um, for the sake of the video though i'm just gonna end it here you guys and i hope i see you guys in the next one bye